Hi everyone, my name is Olivia Sung, a solutions architect on Amazon Selling Partner API team. Today in this video, I would like to talk about best practices when using Order API, especially when dealing with the high volume of orders. Orders API is a popular API among our SP APIs. However, I often see an issue where developers mention that their order is missing when they call the Orders API. Let's first see what order missing is. When a buyer purchases an item from Amazon, Amazon sends the order information to the seller. At this point, if the seller is using Fulfillment by Merchant, or FBM, then the seller must prepare the delivery box, print the label, choose a carrier, and then ship the item. However, bad scheduling of orders API occasionally results in missing orders where the order information never reaches the seller. Missing order not only affects the buyer experience, but what's worse is that it may eventually impact seller's account health status. There are many ways to fetch orders, and one of the most commonly used method is to call Get Orders API. This API is designed to provide you with programmatic access to order information. It can return a list of orders with some basic order information and up to 100 orders for each API call. In the left side of the request parameter, you can specify date range, order status, fulfillment channels, and even the order IDs or buyer emails to filter the order. These basic order information can help sellers start preparing the shipments effectively to start packaging. For example, you can specify the order status to unshipped to filter all the orders that needs to be shipped. If you're able to schedule a report, we also highly recommend order reports. Now taking a look at the right side, under the response, the API returns a list of order information, next token, and also the date time information. If you cannot get all the information with one single API call, you're able to use this next token to get the rest of the orders. In order to efficiently fetch order information, the most common way is to create an iteration and set up a time interval for calling the Get Orders API. In this iteration logic, first initialize the last updated after parameter to the value start, and the last updated before parameter to the value end. In the video, the interval is set to one hour, and then after each API call, the next API call will start from where the last one ends. By dynamically changing the start and the end value, we're able to establish a logic that periodically fetches orders and prevent duplicate orders. The time interval depends on the volume of orders and how frequent the seller wants to fetch. This logic looks flawless, but it may lead to a missing order. Let's take a look at an example to see what I mean. In the snippet, this request is trying to fetch all the orders that are updated between 13th and 14th hour. You can see the last updated after parameter is specified to 13th, while the last updated before parameter is specified to 14th. And from the response, there's only one order in this time range, which is last updated at 13.15. High level, this looks totally fine. But let's check out Seller Central. We see that there are actually two orders that are updated in this time range. The first one is updated at 1315, as we have seen from our Get Orders API call in previous slide. But at the same time, we can see that there is another order which is updated at 1340, and this order was not returned by the API call. So why did we only receive one order and not both? The answer is inside our Get Orders API response. Dun, dun, dun. Now let's get back and take a look at the API response again. At the line 22 of the response, there is a parameter also named last updated before. But check out the value, which is 1330, which is different from the value specified as request parameter, which is 14. In this parameter, last updated before is the critical piece. What this parameter tells us is that the API call only returned orders up to 1330. Even though the API call is trying to fetch all the orders from 13th to 14th hour, the actual call successfully responded only with orders between 13th to 1330. This last updated before parameter in the response will override the last updated before request parameter. Oh my goodness, if you're confused, that's totally okay. I got this timeline handy to visualize our scenario. So this timeline describes the requested time range and the actual time range. We can see that even we specify the time range to 13 to 14th hour, but only the orders from 13 to 13.30 are returned. This is how some orders can go missing when using orders API according to the logic shown earlier. So what does this mean? 
Since our iteration is set up to every hour, the next API call will try to fetch all the orders from 14 to 15th hour. As a result, the orders from 1330 to 14 will not be returned. And you can imagine how this gets worse over time. In order to avoid such an issue, try the suggested logic that includes validation. Start by adding a validation between each API call. Compare the last update before value from response with the end value, and then use whichever is smaller. So if the response value is smaller than the end value, assign this value to the start. Otherwise, just assign the end value for the next API call. This validation determines the start time of the next API call. By implementing this logic, you're able to use an appropriate time parameter to prevent missing orders when periodically fetching orders. The same logic goes for created after and created before request parameters in get order API. Let's see this improved logic in action from our example earlier. Given that we have same time interval setup, the first API call would have completed fetching orders between 13th to 14th hour, but it gave us the value of last updated before from the payload, which is smaller than 14th hour. So we should use this value as a next start time for the second API call. By the time second API call is scheduled, instead of assigning last updated after query parameter to 14th, by assigning it to 1330, we see that all the orders have been fetched without anything missing. No missing order, happy customers. Well, this is all I had for you today. Hope you found this useful and hopefully you get to implement this logic when using Get Orders API. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more SP API videos and happy coding from all of us at Amazon Selling Partner API team. Thanks for watching.